KNBC 9 News at Noon starts now. On this weather impact day, we are tracking showers and thunderstorms moving through the metro. We're going to talk about how much longer they stick around for and when we'll finally see some drier air. It's an operation to, for the, watch these guys get it all put back together. Work continues to get the power back on for everyone in the metro following last week's storms. We'll have an update on how long it could take until the last person's power is back. Donald Trump says he's now the target of an investigation into the deadly Capitol attack on January 6th. What we're learning about the latest investigation into the former president. Thanks so much for joining us at noon here on KMBC. I'm Jamie Weiss. Let's get to first alert weather's Chad Crilly because today is an impact day and oh, we are seeing the impact behind you. Yeah, we sure are. Showers and thunderstorms finally working their way through the metro this morning and into the early afternoon. The good news is we have nothing severe currently, but if you're out and about, the weather may impact you. Live look from our City View camera. Raindrops as storms continue. 68 degrees right now with those showers and storms downtown. The dew point is at 67. Our air quality today still not the best. It is fair. So live radar shows you where the heavier activity is. It's now moved into the Missouri side. So from Odessa to Lexington, showers, a few thunderstorms about to approach you. More heavy rain just to the north of Harrisonville. And then also we are watching from Miami to Lynn County, south of Paola, a stronger thunderstorm that is starting to develop. Luckily, this sort of cluster of showers and storms has been weakening over the past hour to hour and a half. But as it works into an environment that is a little bit more favorable for strong storms this afternoon, we'll have to watch it. Zooming in tighter to the metro, north side lighter rain, Parkville up to Fairview here. You can see there's just some light showers, maybe a rumble of thunder, lightning strike. And then further to the south, we're talking Overland Park, Olathe, New Century Air Force Base. A cell to the south of you is producing lightning, and all of this continues to shift generally to the south and to the east. And some slightly drier air will work in here over the next couple of hours. So on this weather impact day, the best opportunity for strong thunderstorms through 2 p.m. A few of those storms could be strong, so coming up here in just a couple of minutes, we'll look at that strong storm threat on future scan and talk about when drier air moves into the picture. All right, appreciate the heads up. Thanks, Chad. Average crews say that they have now restored power to 99% of affected customers from Friday's storm. We are taking a live look at Evergy's outage map, and right now the map shows just under 2,000 customers still don't have power at the height of the storm. Nearly a quarter million customers were in the dark, and the frustration continues to grow for those who are still waiting for Evergy to restore their power. KMBC 9's Matt Evans joins us live in Prairie Village, Kansas, and Matt, some people are still waiting at this hour. A lot of those are here in Johnson County, Jamie, and the bad news is, is these storms moving through, the rain that's coming down, the thunder and lightning associated with it means that Evergy had to stop their work in some parts of the metro. We saw bucket trucks come down whenever that storm was rolling in. It's just simply not safe to be up in those trucks when there's thunder and lightning in the area. That's why we're under an overhang as well to make sure that we have some cover for this report. So something that we've heard from homeowners today, five days without power now, simply unacceptable. They also say they are not getting answers from Evergy either. They're not hearing exactly when they might have power, no estimation or anything like that. Evergy again saying that they are hopeful that everybody has power back on at some point today, but these storms, these showers, that could certainly put a damper on their plans as well. So as far as when power is going to be back on for everybody, still not entirely sure, but it is something that Evergy says they're continually working around the clock on. But again, these storms, these showers could make that a little bit more difficult to get everybody's pack power back on by later today. We'll have more on stories from people who still don't have power coming up on our news at 4, 5, and 6 tonight. Live in Prairie Village, Matt Evans, KBC 9 News. All right, thanks, Matt. Try to stay dry out there. We know a popular bakery is back in business today after they were without power since Friday storms. McLean's Bakery says Evergy finally restored their power last night. The storms had knocked out their power and they left the bakery in the dark, so they had to cancel some orders. Fortunately, they say their customers were understanding and they're standing by them. Well, we've had to cancel things over the phone and we're like apologizing and this stuff. And they're like, no worries. Like, we're definitely going to be ordering from you again. Like, don't even worry about it. Um, so it's nice to know that we've made such an impact on the community that they like want to help us and that they want to like do everything that they can to make sure we didn't get like hit too hard. The bakery says they should have most of their items available again, including pastries and coffee. So the power is back for most people, but people in Kansas City's Waldo neighborhood still have a lot of cleanup ahead of them. We found a lot of trees down in people's yards and some have even fallen on top of cars. 
One woman tells us she's having trouble getting to her own home because of the debris. Those are really large trees. I think that that's what's so wild to me is uh, it had to be a really powerful storm to break those trees. I mean, they're, I mean, two, three feet across. Well, cities across the metro have opened up drop off sites where you can take branches and other debris. To see a list of sites near you, just head to KMBC.com. Overnight in Kansas City, Missouri, two people were shot and killed in separate incidents. KMBC 9's Martin Augustine shows us where and has the latest on both investigations. Here at the Kansas City Crime Lab, investigators are now pouring over evidence collected at both scenes. The first homicide in an apartment complex on East 42nd Street near I-70 and Pittman Road. The other deadly scene in a home near 54th Street and in Indiana. At the apartment complex, police received the initial calls of trouble right around 1030 last night. The first officers to get there finding a man in a parking lot who'd been shot. There's officers providing emergency aid until medics arrived, but the man died a short time later at a nearby hospital. No arrests yet, no description of a suspect yet. And about 30 minutes after getting word of this shooting came the call from 54th in Indiana. There, police finding a woman inside of a home who'd also been shot. Like the other scene, those officers gave emergency aid. Medics arriving shortly thereafter doing the same, but the woman died there in the home. Police did make an arrest here nearby the scene. He's a person of interest, and detectives say they are not looking for anybody else. According to the latest available information from the Kansas City, Missouri Police Department, these are homicides number 110 and 111 in the city this year. Martin Augustine, KBC News. Former President Donald Trump says he's received a letter informing him that he's the target of a federal criminal probe into his alleged efforts to overturn the 2020 presidential election results. ABC's Justin Finch is following the story from Washington. ABC News has learned former President Donald Trump has received a letter from special counsel Jack Smith's office informing him that he is a target of the Justice Department's criminal investigation of the deadly Capitol attack on January 6th and efforts to interfere with the 2020 election. This is exactly what we saw in the documents case. For example, we knew that Trump got a target letter days before he was indicted. This is typically what federal prosecutors do to alert somebody that there is an ultimate indictment coming. The former president confirming on his social media platform that he received the letter Sunday night and that he has just days to report to the grand jury if he chooses to testify before it. Sources tell ABC News federal prosecutors question witnesses about efforts to encourage so-called fake electors to submit alternate electoral votes for Trump in key states that he had lost to President Joe Biden. Trump has long insisted that he has done nothing wrong. This is now the second target letter Trump has received from special counsel Jack Smith. Smith also sent one to Trump before his indictment in the investigation into Trump's alleged mishandling of national security records after leaving the White House and alleged efforts to obstruct the government's efforts to retrieve them. We have one set of laws in this country and they apply to everyone. Trump was indicted on 37 criminal counts, including willful retention of classified materials. He pleaded not guilty to all charges. And a court hearing in that classified records case is scheduled for today in Florida. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. Well, happening today, we'll see a standoff at the Missouri Supreme Court over the ability of Missourians to vote to restore abortion rights. Missouri has banned most abortions ever since the U.S. Supreme Court overturned Roe versus Wade last year. And earlier this year, a pro-abortion rights campaign proposed a constitutional amendment to change that. But a disagreement over the cost meant that the campaign hasn't been able to gather signatures, meaning the question might not get onto the 2024 ballot. Kansas City Mayor Quentin Lucas is getting involved, arguing that states inter interference is blocking fair access to put this to a vote. He filed a high court brief supporting the proposed ballot amendment. He wrote in part, quote, the Missouri Supreme Court should order the attorney general to stop the games and allow democracy in our state to work. If approved, the amendment would enshrine the individual right to make decisions about abortion, child care and birth control into the state's constitution. The Supreme Court will begin hearing arguments this afternoon at three o'clock. A driver in downtown Kansas City got quite the surprise this morning when they drove into a sinkhole. Just take a look at this video sent in to us by a viewer. You can see a water main break causing this sinkhole on 16th Street between Grand and Walnut. A driver attempted to go across it and their car fell in. 
Crews have removed the car and they are working to get that man brake fixed as well as that sinkhole will keep you posted. The Kansas City Chiefs training camp in St. Joseph gets underway today. Rookies and quarterbacks are reporting to Missouri Western State University, including reigning league and Super Bowl MVP Patrick Mahomes. We expect to hear from him and coach Andy Reid later on today. They'll be practicing tomorrow in a closed practice. So here are some of the other dates to keep in mind when it comes to training camp. Veterans report on Friday. The first open practice is Sunday, but remember you need to have a ticket and there's a $5 admission fee. Monday, July 24th is season ticket member day. The first preseason game is August 13th as the Chiefs travel to New Orleans to take on the Saints. The final day of training camp in St. Joe is August 17th. A U.S. soldier is now in custody in North Korea. The investigation at noon into why he walked into the country where he was captured. The White House has another plan to forgive student loans. I'm Amy Liu in Washington with who's eligible and how much could be waived. And we have showers and thunderstorms dotted across the metro on this impact day. We'll track those for you and also talk about a big warm up on the way next week in your nine day forecast. Your station leading the way with first alert weather, Kansas City's largest, most experienced team, KNBC 9 News.
today is a first alert weather impact day and we are definitely seeing the impact on the roadways. We are taking a live look at 435 just past Winter Road on the Missouri side of the metro where a semi is blocking several southbound lanes right now. Traffic is backed up to nearly the Missouri River. You're looking at at least a 10 minute drive time delay right now, but this isn't the only issue we've seen on the roads today. We're seeing some ponding water and some flooding as we take a look at I-35 near West Penway. Focus in on that far lane as it's driving towards us. You'll notice that ponding water there in that left lane. Right now, an American soldier is in custody in North Korea after crossing the DMZ border into the country. A U.S. official says the Army soldier crossed over voluntarily and he was not in uniform when he went into North Korea. According to the United Nations Command, he crossed the DMZ separating North and South Korea during a joint security area tour. Another official says there's no indication that the soldier was trying to defect. There's another opportunity for some people to have their federal student loan debt forgiven. The Biden administration is out today with a state by state breakdown of just how much they plan to waive in the next few weeks. Amy Liu is in our Washington bureau with the amount the administration plans to forgive. Well, the Biden administration is waiving $39 billion of student loans. The plan covers more than 800,000 borrowers enrolled in fixed income driven repayment programs, and you don't have to do anything in order to qualify. The Education Department is notifying those eligible, which includes people who made at least 20 years of qualifying monthly payments. The administration says the action will correct historic failures in which previous payments under these plans were not accurately accounted. If I had a parent plus loan and I was paying for uh, 25 years um, and then the I wasn't given credit for the payments that I made the number of months and it was never being counted well and I continued to pay. Well, that person is going to realize that they're going to be reimbursed and other people whose months were not counted are going to have those months counted now. The Education Department began contacting people directly last week about those wave payments, with more expected over the coming weeks. In Washington, I'm Amy Liu. Came more than $24,000 will go to the family of a 22-year-old that was killed in a plane crash last week. A GoFundMe was set up for the Hayden Richard Scholarship Fund. Hayden was one of two people killed in the crash in the Lake of the Ozarks. Another person was seriously hurt, but there's still no word on what caused that crash. The Powerball jackpot has now soared to over a billion dollars. That's a billion with a B. So if you'd like to choose the cash option, you'd walk home with a cool $518 million. Now, this is only the seventh time in U.S. history that a lottery jackpot has reached at least a billion dollars. But your chance of winning the jackpot is one in $292 million. A million. That's according to the Powerball website. The next drawing is tomorrow if you plan to go get a ticket. Now, the Mega Millions jackpot is also among the highest in games history. After no one won Friday, the prize now stands at $640 million. So this is the seventh biggest payout in Mega Millions history. The next drawing for that is tonight. It's something we all use and most of us could probably use a little more of. Our next Rawson Report special is all about new ways to keep your money safe. Chief National Consumer Correspondent Jeff Rawson is breaking it all down. I'm bringing you the newest tricks to save you cash and the tips on how to protect that money too. You're missing out on major savings at a local store. From furniture to electronics, you can score 90% off. And every time you get money on a payment app like Venmo or PayPal, you're doing something wrong right now that could risk losing the cash. Plus, I'll show you how criminals can tamper with real QR codes to steal your information. Yeah, they're making up fake QR codes to look like the real thing. You're going to watch it happen to me. You just uh, hit the QR code so you can enter. There it goes. You can enter my credit card number. I'm typing that in, but I'm not going to say it out loud, guys. Sorry. Make payment and done. Jim, Jim's just off camera here. Jim, come here. You have that information. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Already? Already. Yeah. I mean, right now I'm looking at your name. There's your credit card number. Oh, read it to me then. Three. What's the expiration date? What's the, what's the security code? And that's the most important part because for me, now I can go online and start shopping. What do we do here? What, what's the tip? Well, I mean, like for this one, for example, this is really simple. When you walk up to any of these boards like this, just go like this, see if these things peel off. If they peel off, that, that's not a good sign. You can't afford to miss this one. It's a Rossum Report special, protecting your money.
Rawson reports protecting your money airs Saturday at 5 on KCWE. We do want to check back in with Chad about the forecast because it is an impact day. You say there is a chance of severe weather later on. Yeah, the chance for showers and thunderstorms definitely with us. Some of those stronger storms to low grade severe, not out of the question. Luckily, thus far this afternoon, we have not seen any severe weather. Rain? Yes. Live look from our City View camera. Can't even see the skyline. The rain continues to fall right now in Kansas City. Temperatures are cooler because of the rain. We're sitting at 68 degrees. The dew point here is at 67. These two numbers are close. Our wind is calm, so it's possible later today into tonight some patchy fog may form. Air quality, by the way, is in the fair category. Two rounds of showers and thunderstorms across the Show Me State today. One early this morning, that was the stronger of the two. It sort of zapped the energy across parts of western Missouri. Now we're seeing the second round pushing through Kansas City. It's not as strong because it doesn't have as much energy to work with. Still, showers and storms definitely out there from Lexington to Odessa. A heavier pocket of rain near Harrisonville and then one just to the west of Butler right along Interstate 49. I want to zoom in just a little closer to this cluster so you can get a better idea of where the storm with the most lightning strikes is moving into. That would be into Johnson County, Missouri. So hold in Warrensburg. Be prepared for some heavy rain, at least for 15 to 20 minutes. Also quite a few lightning strikes and some briefly gusty winds with that cluster. Taking you back into the metro, Kansas City, as we just saw, still seeing some light rainfall. Feral view, Zona Rosa, some light rain also ongoing, a couple of lightning strikes, but just to your west, including spots like Leavenworth, Lansing, south to Fairmount here, you're not seeing as much rainfall. Tonganoxie at this hour is dry. So the better chance of rain over the next couple of hours definitely going to be in western Missouri as we start to dry out in eastern Kansas. Temperature wise, definitely cooler where it has rain. 68 in KC, as we pointed out to you, those upper 60s extend to the north. 67 in Liberty, 66 in Cameron. Check out Garnett. Not much rain there. Warm at 85 degrees. Definitely looking at a hot day across parts of central Kansas. Luckily, we will not be feeling that heat thanks to the cloud cover and rain. We keep that weather impact going through about 2 o'clock. Low chance of a shower at 3. Temperatures only in the mid 80s today. Skies will clear out overnight tonight, but we are tracking another chance of some showers. So let's look at future scan. Here we are today at 315. Most of the rain starts to wrap up. We go into the overnight hours, some passing clouds, showers across central Missouri. Most of us stay dry. Wednesday will have a lot of cloud cover. If we can get some sunshine during the late afternoon and evening, here we are at 3 o'clock, additional showers and a few thunderstorms may form. We will definitely keep an eye on those. Here's your nine day forecast weather impact day for the next couple of hours. Chance of afternoon evening thunderstorms on Wednesday turns into a morning shower on Thursday. We're cooler and dry into the weekend. The heat is definitely on next week. OK, appreciate that heads up. Thank you, Chad. The Barbie movie comes out on Friday and Union Station is getting in on all the excitement before the big release. We'll show you the special exhibit opening to celebrate all things Barbie.
Union Station is getting people ready for the release of the Barbie movie this Friday. And in the world of Barbie, you can never have enough clothes or, just as important, accessories. Barbie artifacts throughout the years will soon be on display at Union Station's Extreme Screen Lobby. More Barbie-themed events will be announced leading up to the film's release. And if you'd like to see the film at Union Station, tickets are on sale right now. The NHL is coming to the Kansas City area in September. And if you'd like tickets, you need to act quickly. The St. Louis Blues will be taking on the Dallas Stars September. 30th at Cable Dama Arena in Independence. Tickets went on sale to the general public at noon, so about 26 minutes ago. So if you want to go, you should act fast. And the last two years that NHL has had a game here in the KC Metro, tickets sold out the day they went on sale. So maybe after we finish up the noon newscast, you go buy some. The Royals are teaming up with the Dream Factory to help make some dreams come true. The team invited Jackson Sladen and his family to the ballpark last night. Before the game, they got to hang out in the dugout and meet some of the players. Jackson has Burkett lymphoma, but he says it's not slowing him down. Arlen Jennings helped Jackson get an autograph from his favorite players. Now, what's your tactic on getting an autograph? I don't really have a tactic. Do it down, just kind of holding the ball out there with the pen. That usually works. Yeah. You know, the baseball players come in, they, they know what you want when you have the pen. And the, do we have pen mom too? Do we have a mom? Yeah, we're getting a Sharpie. We're getting a Sharpie. Okay, we're getting a Sharpie. Okay, so we're getting it. Well, I wish you the best of luck. I hope you get a lot of autographs today. Thank you. And have a great time at the ballpark. Thank you. The Dream Factory is an all-volunteer organization granting plenty of dreams to children in the Kansas City area. The Troubled Mission Gateway Project in Johnson County is finally finished. What we're learning about next steps for the dormant property that's now an eyesore. And as we take a live look outside a dreary Tuesday, we will have the latest on when stormy conditions will move out of the area. That's next at 1230.
power station leading the way with first alert weather. Kansas City's largest, most experienced team, KNBC 9 News. Thanks so much for sticking with us at noon. I'm Jamie Weiss. Chad Crilly's here with your first alert forecast and impact day, and you can tell just by looking out the window. It's dreary. A good day to stay inside, read a good book, and maybe watch the rain fall. Scattered showers and thunderstorms are possible over the next 48 hours. The few strong storms not out of the question, though for today, I'm really not seeing a very high severe weather threat, which is great news, but rain continues to fall. Next week, one headline we want to let you know about now is it looks like it will be turning pretty hot. Showers and thunderstorms continue mainly on the Missouri side, so west of Sedalia, north of Windsor here, you can see pockets of moderate to heavy rain. One strong storm has developed the south of Butler along Interstate 49. That may give you some heavy downpours, some frequent lightning, and briefly gusty winds as well. Turning to eastern Kansas, things have really dried out. So now from Olathe, south to Paola, west to Ottawa, along Interstate 35, we're almost completely dry, and we are drying out as well in the metro. So I think as we go through the next couple of hours, the rain will start to wind down. Can't rule out a stray shower or thunderstorm. If we can get a storm to pop, it still could be strong. High temperatures today range from the mid 80s along the north of Interstate 70 to the mid 90s where we get sunshine today. Spots like Ottawa 94, 95 and Garnett. So you'll want to make sure you're taking some of those hot weather precautions with the heat. The rest of us not feeling that for now, but we're going to look a little more closely to when that heat will build in your nine day forecast that's ahead. All right, thanks, Chad. Well, since Friday night, crews have been working around the clock to restore power in the metro. Evergy brought in 2,000 of their own workers and another 1,000 from outside companies. We spoke with Aaron Schreiber, who lives in Kansas. He hasn't had power for three days. The storm snapped three power poles behind his home. He says Evergy crews cut limbs, fought off bees, and they were able to install some new poles starting on Sunday. Aaron tells us he's glad to see some progress on his block, but the storm actually brought people together. My social circle on the block has grown the past three days. Oddly, it's kind of made us all better neighbors. <laughs> Even though we're all grumpier, we're all helping each other out more. Focusing on the positives, right? Evergy says the rain today is going to slow the process, but they do hope to have 80% of the remaining customers repaired by the end of the day. Kansas City, Kansas Mayor and CEO Tyrone Gardner has issued a local disaster emergency. This will let the unified government free up resources just to help people recover. So if you happen to see any damage, you can report it by calling 311. In Wyandotte County, the Board of Public Utilities is still restoring power to people impacted by the weekend storms. There are currently 80 outages affecting 377 customers. That's significantly less than the 38,000 customers who lost power when the storms moved through last week. But crews are expected to finish restoring power to all today. Tree service companies have also been busy since Friday's storms. Cartwright Tree Care tells us it's the worst widespread tree damage they've seen since the ice storm of 2002. And there's one type of tree that's seen the most damage. The silver maples, they're just very soft, soft wood. So any large winds will knock branches down, maybe the whole tree. Cartwright also says they're seeing more damage in trees that weren't trimmed or maintained, so they suggest you have an expert come inspect the trees before the next big windstorm. As this cleanup continues, KNBC 9 is keeping you safe from scammers. Some are looking to take advantage of the people who may have lost a lot in these storms. The Johnson County District Attorney says to be on the lookout for home repair scams. You're encouraged to have direct contact with your insurance company and don't give information to door-to-door -to -door salesmen or unsolicited phone calls. Use reputable local businesses and have written contracts as well as reasonable payment terms. You can report scams to the Johnson County DA's office by calling 913 711 the troubled Mission Gateway project in Johnson County, Kansas won't be moving forward. The site near Johnson Drive and Row has sat empty for more than a decade. Last night, the Mission City Council voted to terminate the developer's agreement. Leaders say the developer hasn't paid more than $400,000 in real estate taxes and special assessments. And there was a lot of issues with it and it just delayed the progress, got worse became the laughing stock. We, the residents, are bearing that and the costs that we're having to pay because we have higher property taxes. No word yet what comes next for the partially constructed buildings and the parking structure there, but of course we'll bring you updates as soon as we learn more.
Today, the Lawrence, Kansas City Council will be considering adopting an ordinance that will protect transgender people. The rule would make Lawrence a safe haven for all from discriminatory acts, legislation, regulation, as well as other actions. The discussion comes after public comment about a new law in Kansas that bars transgender people from using restrooms or locker rooms for the gender of which they identify. The commission meeting will start tonight at 545. Kansas City streetcar crews are still working on repairing the rail on the 670 bridge. Crews were able to pour some concrete Monday and then they worked to wield the rails overnight. Well, the rails, I should say the rail buckled two weeks ago today and crews have been working around the clock to fix it to get the streetcar back up and running. Still no word yet on when the streetcar will be rolling, but we are expecting more updates throughout this week. The City of Independence is taking a stand against high property assessments in Jackson County. The City Council unanimously passed a resolution last night that could lead to legal action. It directs the City Manager and the City Councilor to research a class action lawsuit against Jackson County and provide guidance on if the City should join in. Council members say it's important to represent the City's residents and stand up for them. Our citizens deserve it. Our City deserves it. And I'm just beside myself that we even have to deal with this. But here we are. I, I'm not saying that there is standing. I don't know that though, and none of us do. And until we ask the questions, I think we owe it to these people to, to make that um, unknown uh, an educational piece. The lawsuit argues huge increases in property assessments are illegal. We've learned that so far 38,000 taxpayers have appealed their property assessments in Jackson County. And if you would plan to do the same, you need to do it soon. You have less than two weeks to do so. The deadline to file is Monday, July 31st. If your grill isn't going to make it through the rest of the summer, now might be the perfect time to replace it. Next, the experts at Consumer Report show you where you can find a great grill for under 300 bucks. Showers and thunderstorms are beginning to wind down, but this is not our only chance of rain this week. We'll look hour by hour over the next 48 hours and tell you when the next opportunity of thunderstorms arrives. Your station leading the way, saving you money with tips to make ends meet when times are tight. KMBC 9 News. You are taking a live look outside right now from our City View camera. We have showers and thunderstorms that continue to rumble through. Right now, no severe weather across the area, but definitely looking at some pockets of moderate rain still ongoing here across portions of western Missouri. In fact, we'll take you over to First Alert Radar where you can see some of those showers and thunderstorms that continue 
to move through the best opportunity, I think, for the next little while for the showers and storms will be across central Missouri. We can't rule out some pockets of ponding on the roadway as some of these storms move through. Notice KC West. We are dry for the time being. However, we can't rule out a stray shower before the day is done. We'll take you through the first alert future scan, look at your nine day forecast and show you when a big warm up is on the way. All right, thank you, Chad. Summer is in full swing, and that probably means your grill is too. But if you need a new one, KMBC 9's Donna Pittman and Consumer Reports tested the best ones for under $300. You can easily spend thousands on a new grill, but Consumer Reports Paul Hope says you don't need to. You really don't need to spend a lot of money on a fancy grill. It's not going to make your food taste any better. For that, you really just want to practice, practice, practice. CR has a specially designed lab just to test grills. The good news, you can get a good grill for under $300. Want a grill that heats up fast and evenly cooks food? This Even Embers model is a great option if you tend to cook a lot of the same foods at the same time. If you want to cook up a variety of foods at the same time, you want a grill that offers a decent temperature range. CR tests for that, too. Temperature range is important because a grill that can cook at a broad range of temperatures can cook way more food and it can do it easier. So you can sear a steak on one side of the grill and slow cook a piece of chicken without burning the skin on the other. This Revo Ace from Walmart delivers. It's also sturdy and well made. If you prefer charcoal grilling, this Weber Kettle Grill consistently earns very good scores for evenness. Ready to take your grilling beyond the grates? CR also checked out several flat top grills. A flat top grill fills in the gaps left behind by a regular grill. So instead of having grates, it's got a smooth surface a lot like a griddle, which makes it ideal for anything you'd order from a diner. Things like pancakes, bacon, eggs, grilled cheese are all great on a flat top. This loco earned top scores. It has special burners that cycle on and off to maintain the temperature across its very large cooking surface. Paul still managed to cook for a crowd on this budget-friendly flat top from Blackstone, which starts at about $260. Consumer Reports also tested the Ninja Woodfire Electric and says it's a great alternative to flame grilling. It also doubles as an air fryer. Donna Pittman, KNBC 9 News. If you've ever booked a flight or bought concert tickets, you've likely felt the pain of hidden fees. Next, we'll show you the new efforts to help you avoid junk fees and save you money. Jungle, so whatever happens in the jungle, stays in the jungle. <laughs> A new show debuts tonight on KCWE with some familiar faces. We'll show you how two former Harry Potter stars are living it up with their fantastic friends. Saving you money, there are concerns about the hidden fees you have when booking a hotel room or buying a concert ticket online. Now the White House is doing something to get rid of those junk fees. ABC's Melissa Adan has a closer look at what's happening and how you can avoid those fees. 
They're called junk fees, those hidden or unexplained charges you pay when making certain types of purchases online. It's a growing concern for consumers. Generally speaking, customers don't like hidden fees. People would rather just be presented with one price and they can decide whether or not that's fair. They don't like the surprise gotcha at the end of the transaction. Ted Rossman of Bankrate.com says the government is now working with some major companies to try and lower these fees and give consumers more transparency when they're shopping. Just recently, the White House held an event with some of the large ticketing agencies, companies like Live Nation, Ticketmaster, SeatGeek. There's been an agreement among those companies to be more transparent in their fee structure. Rossman says some types of fees like sports tickets and home rentals have become more transparent, but other purchases like airline seats or hotel resort fees have not. But a big question is whether less junk fees will mean more money in consumers' wallets. Rossman says companies may lower junk fees but raise prices in other ways to make up the difference. I don't think people will really see savings from this. I do think think they'll see more transparency. So that is a win for comparison shoppers that you'll have a better idea of what you're getting into. But I don't think prices will come down. So what can you do to avoid these junk fees? Experts say to read the fine print for anything you buy online or when you sign up for a new service or financial account. If you don't understand the reason for a fee, ask for an explanation. And if you end up paying an unexpected fee, call the company and see if they will waive the charge. Melissa Don, ABC News, Los Angeles. After the success of Quarterback on Netflix, the streaming service has announced plans for a new sports docuseries. This time, it's going to the U.S. Women's National Soccer Team. Netflix has cameras with the team as they try to win their third straight World Cup. The series will include some big names within the program like Alex Morgan and Megan Rapinoe. The team will play their first game this Friday at 8 o'clock against Vietnam. And you can cheer on the women's national team at the KC Live Block at Power & Light. On Friday, there's going to be a watch party as the team takes on Vietnam. Tickets are free, but you need to reserve them via SeatGeek. Entry will start 90 minutes before kickoff. There's going to be another watch party next Wednesday when the team plays the Netherlands. The Casey Current is asking for your feedback. The team took to Twitter to ask fans what types of events they'd like to see at their new stadium. The new stadium will seat just over 11,000 fans, and it's set to open for the team's 2024 season next March. Traveling to new places can be a truly magical experience, and there's a new travel show premiering tonight on KCWE that chimes into that. As I found out, the hosts look pretty familiar. Oliver's reluctant because he's never paddleboarded before. From swimming in the ocean to soaring through the jungle, this is just a taste of what you'll find in the new CW show, Fantastic Friends. I'm a bit wise. We wanted to bring a show what everyone can watch, and whether young or old, well-traveled or not, um, that there's something for everyone. And that's what that's what's the main thing we wanted to do because, you know, we want it to be entertaining for people. The Phelps twins, better known as the Weasley twins from Harry Potter, are leaving the magical world behind to explore the muggle world and all that it has to offer, with some famous friends in tow, like Game of Thrones' Maisie Williams. During the show, is actually brought us closer together, which I, I, I didn't think was going to happen. I thought we'd end up killing each other by the, by the end of it, but it actually brought us close together. And so we've always been big fans of traveling and it, it really came from starting with the press tours for Potter um, because we'd go to a location and some people like just to stay in a hotel, do the junket and leave, but we would literally do the junket, and then go and see as much of the city or country as we possibly could. And while their travels may seem extreme, they think their show has lessons all viewers can take with them. Don't always look for the Instagram moment. Go for the experience. And like the, the best photos are always the ones which aren't posed, aren't they? Like the, the you genuinely having fun. And that's kind of what we wanted to show that is possible. So tonight's episode is the premiere. Game of Thrones star Maisie Williams will be helping the brothers make the most of their trip to St. Lucia. You can catch Fantastic Friends tonight at 8 on KCWE, followed by KNBC 9 News at 9. This Friday is your chance to get a free cup of coffee, all while helping hundreds of kids across the metro. KBC 9 First News is picking up the tab for your cup of coffee Friday morning to support KBC 9 Cares for Kids and our back to school drive for KVC. Our crews are going to be at the Roasteries Factory Cafe that's on West 27th Street in KC Mo between 9 and 10. We are calling this Coffee for a Cause. So your coffee is free, but donations will be accepted for KBC and encouraged. 
This way, foster kids across the metro will have everything they need for that first day of school. And hey, you don't have to wait to donate. Log on to KBC.com slash community to make a difference anytime. Chad, I am so excited for Friday morning to spend my morning out there getting caffeinated, hopefully meeting so many people out there. I'm hoping we have good weather because that's going to dictate my coffee order. <laughs> yeah, either hot coffee or nice coffee, right? Well, we are looking at partly cloudy skies for Friday, and right now the rain chances are pretty low. Right now, outside though, the rain chances are a little bit higher. You can see some light rain continues to fall over Kansas City. Still can't see downtown. Visibility is poor. Winds are light at the east southeast about 10 miles per hour, 69 degrees, so cooler because of the rain. And I should mention our air quality is in the fair category, so not the best. Let's look at how this morning evolved. So two clusters of showers and thunderstorms. The first one moved through Missouri very early this morning. That stole a lot of the energy from the atmosphere and left clouds behind. For that reason, the second round of showers and thunderstorms that we've seen across our area have been a lot weaker and that severe weather threat is considerably lower as well. Here's first alert live radar still finding pockets of moderate to heavy rain south of Marshall closer to Sedalia also near Windsor and near Clinton as well a shower to the south of you as we get you a little bit closer into the metro you can see for the time being Kansas City itself is dry but one shower to the east of town this is on the Missouri side seeing a lightning strike with that from Zonarosa north to Farrell View and Platte City to Leavenworth, we have all dried out an area that saw some rain showers a short time ago. So the trend as we head into this afternoon is some drier air that's starting to work in. Showers and thunderstorms still possible. And if we can get a storm to pop just at the right time, still can't rule out a stronger storm with some gusty winds. Temperature certainly cooler where it has rained. It is 68 degrees in Liberty north along 35. It is 66 in Cameron 70 in Chillicothe where it is a lot warmer is where winds are out of the south and we haven't seen much rain. Garnett is sitting at 85 degrees currently. So hour by hour through today into the evening hours. Still keeping that weather impact for about another two hours. We'll drop it after two o'clock. Mostly cloudy skies, 20% chance of a light shower through 6 p.m. After that, might get an hour or two of sunshine at 8 o'clock, and then temperatures drop back into the upper 70s after the sun sets tonight. The showers that we're seeing now, not the only chance of rain over the next 48 hours. So let's go into future scan, break this down for you, and we'll want to watch the timestamp. This is at 315 this afternoon. Still that 20% chance of a few showers around. We are dry after that. Early tomorrow morning, we're talking 1230 a.m., a thin line of showers and thunderstorms develop across central Missouri. We should be dry here in the metro. And then by tomorrow, notice cloud cover to start the day and more showers during the afternoon and evening. One or two of those storms that we see may be on the strong side, though at this time widespread severe weather is not expected. Look at how much warmer we get for next weekend. 91 degrees on Sunday next week as well. 93 Monday, mid 90s by Tuesday.
back now with a final check of your forecast. Notice showers and thunderstorms moving into central Missouri. So we're talking Sedalia south to Warsaw, some heavy rain, pockets of lightning. Within the metro, we're starting to dry out. We have a weather impact day through about 2 o'clock. I'll say this, the opportunity for severe weather, that window is starting to close. Still some rain and stronger storms possible. Another chance of showers and thunderstorms as we head into Wednesday, very early Thursday morning, 84 on Friday, 87 Saturday. It's toasty by Sunday and next week is looking downright hot. Okay, feels like summer, right? Thanks, Chad. And thank you so much for joining us at noon. Be sure to join us today for KMBC 9 News at 4 o'clock. Hope you all have a great day. Try to stay dry out there. We'll see you right back here tomorrow.